Hello everybody and welcome back. Thank you very much for joining me. I think I saw a werewolf and I've lost 14 dogs since I lived here. And tonight I have a number of witness reports to share with you. In last week's podcast, we explored a number of reports made by several people across the world who had experience with a dogman or a werewolf type creature that they were happy to share. Each saw a bipedal or quadrupedal animal that resembles a man and a wolf. I also mentioned last week that many of those witnesses saw or experienced a wolf when they were much younger. And some were left with the constant pursuit or drive for answers. As I was voicing this episode, I received a report from a young lady in America named Emma Franco, who was not only experienced a strange wolf-like creature as a child, but now, in later life, she's searching for answers because of her own experience, and she's trying to find out any information into the creature that she saw and why she saw it. Emma's report reminded me of the wolfy account we also shared last week, where a young lady in Scotland had multiple interactions with a wolf-like creature. Many of the reports I shared stated the creature having yellow eyes, and that's something that comes up often. Other than red eye shine, I think yellow, or amberish yellow, is the second most mentioned colour. One of the questions Emma posed was, is he my protector or pursuer? She also asked me where they were from and what they were. I gave her as many examples of the theories behind these creatures as I could, whilst explaining that I was not 100% sure myself. And after speaking with her and she shared all her details, I sent her some similar reports to her own where the creature also had yellow eyes. Emma was happy for me to share her experience and to use her name. She felt it was important to share her truth. And I found her a really erudite young lady. She did not quaver in her report. And I found her a very truthful witness. Here is Emma's experience in her own words. When I was five, I was living at our lake house in East Texas. I was outside playing and I was swinging. And it was while I was swinging that I saw a strange creature. It's hard to describe what this creature looked like. But it had... From what I could see, a wolf's body. It was standing upright, just like a man would, and its legs were bent back. It was about eight feet tall, and it peeked around the corner of my lake house. So I only saw half of its body, but I got a good look at its face and its claws, if you want to call them that. It had tall, pointed ears on top of its head. And the colour of the thing was black and brown and it had yellow eyes. And we stared at each other for what seemed like two minutes. And he was about ten yards away at the most. I glanced over and looked in the window of the house to see if there was a family member. But they were engrossed in an Xbox game. I didn't look in my direction. And when I looked back over to where he was standing, he was gone. What do you think this creature could be? I've been doing a lot of research on this stuff lately and I never really found anything until I came across your website and I've been obsessed with wolves and werewolves ever since this happened. I remember it was cloudy that day and there was a lake right behind my house. It's not too big but a decent size and the place was surrounded by trees. He stood about seven to eight feet tall. He had a face of a wolf and pointy ears. And I could see that he had really, really sharp claws. He had yellow golden eyes. And his fur was blackish, brownish. He was beautiful, though, to look at. I'm 16 now, and most people think I'm crazy. And when I tell them this story, they think I'm mad. But I know what I saw. I'm so glad I came across your website and find someone who could help point me in the right direction. I chatted with Emma and explained just how many reports we have 
where the creature that is seen is classed as impossible, regardless of whether you are, where you are in the world or what age you are. Emma was a young child. She was out playing and she was swinging and relaxed. And I wonder if this was the first time he'd watched her or was this the first time she'd noticed him watching? She went on to add, is he my protector or my pursuer? That kind of has me thinking. I really want to go back to my lake house and just go and see if I can find him because he didn't hurt me or anything. I want to know why. Emma continued, now that part I know is crazy, but it's also confusing. And it's a mixture of being scared of what I'll find and curious to see what I will find. Now I had a look at the area where this event happened on my map and I realised there are at least four reports made by local people not too far from Emma's lake house and here are those reports. And the first one comes from Lufkin, Texas and it happened in January of 2022. And a man said that he saw a Bigfoot walking on his eastern Texas property in Angelina County. The unnamed witness has reported hearing strange noises and has also spotted on numerous occasions a shadowy figure close to his home several times over the course of the past few months. The witness report was shared with Sasquatch Chronicles and the witness said, no one's going to believe me. I came out here earlier with my dog and there was a hairy creature on the edge of my property right along the brush line. The man stated that he was able to look at the creature for a few moments while his dog ran after it before disappearing into the woods. He said, I have no idea what it was. It clearly did not look human. The man says he went back to where the Bigfoot sighting took place and he photographed an unidentified footprint with what appeared to him to be five tiles. And he said, this is the proof that Bigfoot is in East Texas. Now, the city of Lufkin is a um, population of about 35,000 people. And in cryptozoology news, there was a group of eight light creatures that reported in the area that were said to have entered a property, climbed up onto a roof of the house, and the creatures were reportedly communicating with each other throughout the event. Now, a family in 2001 made this report. Our daughter told us this Christmas following an event that she'd had in October of 2001. She'd been afraid of ridicule and did not want to mention it until we decided we needed to tell her about its existence. And when I say its, I'm talking about what's been seen on the property by myself and my wife. We had become acutely aware of its passing through our area due to its screams which could be heard several nights in a row in the creek bottom below our house. It's about three quarters of a mile away. I'd been aware of the screaming since I moved to this location in the winter of 85, 86. The local residents has spoken of a wild man that jumped fences and made loud yells. And I assumed that those stories, if they were true, they were referring to just a mentally ill human. It was years later that I became aware that there were Sasquatch-type creatures along the Red River. In September of 2000, my wife and I found some extremely unusual rock formations. And in the course of our investigations, we were told that Six Bigfoot lived in the area that had been reported. And around 9.30pm that night, we heard the screaming down in the lake bottom and all of the livestock our dogs, our cats in the vicinity were agitated for days afterwards. We heard the screams even after sunrise the following day. We did not mention this to our daughter because she works a night shift in Sherman and she returns home between 2 and 3 a.m. During a series of nights in the fall of 2001, my wife became so anxious that she finally decided to tell our daughter so that she would get into the house quickly as she left the car at night. By Christmas, though, our daughter had moved to Sherman and wouldn't even come back for to get her clothes. And that's when she finally told us what she'd seen. She said, as she drove up the one-lane gravel road that connects the new highway to where we live, the creature 
ran a few yards in front of a headlight. It was running very fast, standing upright, and it went from west to east. This is an open cow pasture on the west, bounded by a barbed wire fence about chest high. On the east side of the road was a maize field and an abandoned house about 200 yards further. My wife pressed her for details, but all she said was, it looked like that thing from Harry and the Hendersons. She doesn't like to talk about the incident because her friends in town make fun of it. After this early in 2002, my wife and I found a coyote completely stripped of flesh, except for its paws. It was very fresh and the bones were still wet. That is, they were not dried and they weren't discoloured, hadn't gone white or anything like that. I cannot positively say what did that. I've lost 14 dogs since I've lived here and I've never found any trace of their body or their bones. He went on to add, Recently, I went into the fallow field behind my house to dig for some very old stone artefacts that I'd been finding for two years on a low mound above the creek. There, in the yellow clay, was a very large, human-looking footprint between 14 and 16 inches long on the side of a trench and evacuated that trench to about three foot deep. I noticed a swarm of flies around something on the opposite side of the trench from the footprint. And it turned out to be a square piece of meat, about two inches square and a quarter inch thick. And one of the edges had coarse hair, like a coyote's. I brought my wife back and I showed her the track and the meat. And she thought we ought to make a cast of the track. But I told her it was pointless as no amount of casts would ever convince anyone of anything. Besides, I'm not interested in convincing anyone of the thing's existence. Those who are involved don't need to be convinced, and those who need convincing aren't involved. We've seen nests in the tall grass behind the house and under the big pecan tree in front of it. There could be some other large animal bedding down there, but there are not many animals that big around here since we stopped pasturing cattle a few years ago. I suddenly smelled a strong skunk-like odour when I was digging at my site. We have lots of skunks around here, so I wrote that off. On two occasions, I found stone artefacts lying on top of soil I've removed from my evacuation the day before, as if they'd been left there for me. At the suggestion of a Bigfoot hunter from Sulphur, Oklahoma, I left a small hand mirror and some dried fruit in a plastic bag at my dig site, but nothing ever disturbed them. I leave all my natural flakes and pebbles I dig up in small piles, but I've never found them disturbed either. Many times as I'm digging, I have a strong sense of something watching me from the tree line on the creek, but I've never seen anything to confirm that. He said, The footprint we saw was between 14 and 16 inches long, and it had a prominent big toe. It was very human looking, except for its size. And the fact that nobody would be walking barefoot there since there's all kind of stickers in that field. Our daughter described what she saw as bigger than a man running upright, running very fast, but slightly hunched over. It was covered with fur. And in her words, it looked like that thing in Harry and the Hendersons. The scream we have heard many times. And it's a long, sustained note with a short yell at the end. This sound is almost like a wolf combined with an owl and a human, but distinctly different from any of these. It often seems to be taunting the cattle to drive them into a frenzy or a panic. Now, the direct monster, as the locals call it, comes through the area twice a year in the fall and early spring. One local man reported seeing a Bigfoot-like creature in the 1950s crossing Highway 82 at Mill Creek in Grayson County. Our witness said that he was told that one creature ran out of a man's barn early one morning near Colbert, which is between Denison and Durant. In Broken Bow, Oklahoma, the Choctaw residents have been terrorised 
by a Bigfoot that they claim threw one of their community over a cliff, killing him. The area is open pasture and it's surrounded by hardwood forest. Our area is nothing but farms, he said, just pastures and barns. The nearest concentration of houses is in the little town of Ector. More recently, the tiny mountain hamlet of Hanobia, Oklahoma, was the site of a mysterious going on. Mournful wails and howls pierced the night, and one family's hard-earned venison began to disappear from an outside freezer. So they locked the meat up at night, and they rigged high-intensity lights to deter the invaders. But night after night, rocks and sticks battered the roof, and someone or something was bold enough to mount the porch. They would slap the cabin walls and twist the lock. At last, the lights revealed glowing red eyes in the brush. One of the men fired at what he later described as a tall, hairy giant. Rains came and washed away all hope of solving the mystery. Investigators found no body. The frightened family promptly moved away. The description of the direct monster brings to mind a report taken years ago when I first came to BBR. It was taken by Adam Bird. And it's a short report on a creature seen in the forest of Boland area. And it's the description in the bill that I want you to listen to. A woman from Clitheroe in the UK stated, I was on a rambling holiday with my husband and we walked the Dunstan Bridge Tramper Trail. And for anybody who doesn't know, the forest of Boland is an amazing place to go. It's lovely. And they have enabled in some areas a like a wooden platform that you can drive a mobility scooter along so that if you're disabled, you don't have to miss out on what the area has to offer. And that's where where they were. They were walking that, and it's called the Tramper Trail. And she said, we were just passing the old working man's club near the start of the route when I was startled to see a tall, hairy man run into the wood line. I don't mean a man size tall. I mean huge, like a half man half ape. I was so startled we returned to the car immediately. When asked, the witness supplied further details and she said, he ran from the small hedgerow into the heavier woods. I saw his profile and he was a man with huge shoulders and thick legs and he was covered in hair like a monkey. Another lady from across the pond made this report. Her name was Monica Rawlins and she said several years ago in 2001 I saw a Bigfoot in my backyard. He stood about seven to eight feet tall. It weighed between 800 and 1,000 pounds. It was black and hairy all over and it smelled worse than a skunk. It had arms like an ape and it looked prehistoric. It was very shocking to see. Most recently a teenage boy claimed that he saw Bigfoot in the Woodville area. Monica said, My sons told me one night that something that smelled like a skunk came close to the house by the bedroom where he was sleeping. Whatever it was moaned and groaned and he could hear it breathing. My son lives in the same house where I saw the Bigfoot in Woodville. The property is densely forested with pine and oak trees. And there are a large amount of wild strawberries growing all around the inside of the abandoned goat pen. Monica's son had been travelling through the woods the day before. And he had the feeling that he was being watched. And he was sure that something was following him. It should be noted that a hike through the wood takes about four hours total. And at various points throughout the hike, he noticed the same musky sweaty horse smell that is so prevalent around the old oak tree. The smell seemed to hang in that certain spot. It wasn't drifting through the air as you could walk into the smell and take two steps and walk out of it. Monica explained that several months before the reported incident, she and her son had gone out to feed the goats that they'd raised. They'd noticed that the very young goats had started coming up missing. And it was at night, so it was dark in their backyard. And while Monica and her son were feeding the goats, they heard a low growl behind them. And the growl sounded very close 
but they couldn't see anything. The witness, Monica, said that her first impression was that the growl came from a big cat. A Sasquatch as a possibility never occurred to her, she said. She remembered lately that she and her son discovered that another goat had disappeared after hearing that growl. The witness remembered that at the time, she started finding dead goats that were not eaten, just dismembered. The witness also said that her geese then started to turn up missing. Monica said that on the day of her visual encounter, she was very busy cooking dinner and she was dealing with family matters. It was daylight outside and she reportedly looked out of a kitchen window in the backyard and saw a very large animal standing on two legs. The animal was very hairy. Monica said it was black in colour. The animal looked like a prehistoric man, she said. She could only see the profile of the subject and it wasn't moving but her view was clear and uninterrupted. She estimated the distance to be approximately 50 to 60 feet between her and the subject. She described it as standing eight to nine feet tall and weighing 800 to 1,000 pounds. She said that it had arms like an ape and they were hanging low at the sides. The subject stood hunched over and she could guess the height because he was stood next to a tree it was nine feet tall. Monica recalled that after watching the creature for a short while, she sat down to collect her thoughts. The whole incident seemed very surreal to her, and after realising what had happened, she stood up to get another look, but he was gone. She guessed that he must have walked back into the woods, and the house was adjacent to many acres of woodland. Monica decided to tell her husband and her son about what she'd seen and her husband ridiculed her. Her son grabbed his gun and immediately went to investigate. And there was no sign of him. The son stated that when he was looking around, he heard gunshots from another area in the woods and he heard two men yelling at each other. He then said he heard one male voice say, what was that? And the other male voice answered, just let's get the hell out of here. Since the incident, the witness and her son have moved the goats to a different location. The witness and her husband now live elsewhere as well. Other incidents have reportedly occurred in the area. The witness's son, who now lives in that same house as a sighting, has heard an unknown animal moaning, groaning and breathing heavily outside the windows. The witness's friend, who's an EMT, reportedly had a very large animal run across the front yard in front of her. Also, another friend's grandson reported seeing a Bigfoot step out of the woods and onto the road, very close to where he was standing. Monica's report reminds me of the case provided by Jazz Smith, who made his report later in life, but the incident that he reported happened when he was still in junior school. And it was 1977, uh, one Sunday afternoon, and he was about 10 years old. And he was actually waiting to watch the film, How the West Was Won. We only had three television stations then back in the UK. So a film was quite welcomed on a Sunday afternoon. And usually as a child, like myself, he would be tasked with making a pot of tea for everyone. And back then we used to have the old metal windows in the houses and they'd steamed up, he said due to the fire being on and the kettle boiling. Jazz saw a face watching him from the window and he described seeing a face that looked like an ape. He said, I waited in the kitchen for the kettle to boil and out of the corner of my eye, a face appeared in the bottom pane. And at first, I thought it was just my reflection. And then I looked again closely. And this time, the face moved and pressed itself hard against the window. It was a sort of chimp and a human style face. It was youngish, I'd say. I pretended I didn't see it, but I was absolutely terrified. I left the room. I sat down motionless. I couldn't say a word, so I decided at the time to draw it, and I did so straight away. The face resembled that of a chimp. It had a short snout. It had black and brown eyes, but with human-like hair everywhere. 
Jazz had another experience in his late teens, around about a decade later, and he was out in the hills at a forested lookout point, and he was the first of his friends to arrive there. It was just him and one other guy, and they started to collect firewood and get the fire started as they waited. And Jazz said, my friend started gathering wood from the left side, and I started from the right. About 10 minutes in, I heard a deep, very deep growl. I dismissed it as cows or sheep from the valley below. But then a couple of minutes later, I heard it again. This time it was deeper and more defined. Whatever it was, it was on my side and it was coming my way. It had a real depth to it that gave the impression it was of a significant size. I placed my firewood by the fire and at the same time, my friend joined me. And just as we did so, that grunt sounded again. This time, it was only a matter of yards away and it was very loud. I looked at my friend, my friend looked at me and we both said, run. And as I ran, I looked back and I caught a glimpse of a bipedal figure that was being illuminated from the tree line and it was huge. Jazz went on to add, the next day, less than one and a half miles from the area of the lookout, a lorry driver driving through a remote road said that he nearly hit an orangutan at 6.30am in the morning. The driver stated that the creature he saw was orangey red in colour and covered in hair. And this made the local newspapers that same week. Jazz said, I just stayed silent and I didn't tell anyone. Experiences like these are unforgettable. They stay with you forever. You constantly question yourself and people question you. They question your honesty. They question your sanity. And sometimes you question or, you know, lean heavily on the patience of others. The image plays over and over along with those questions. It is a complete nightmare having seen a creature. If you left work today and as you were driving home, you saw a Bengal tiger stopped in the middle of the road looking right at you, how would you react? Now, adding to that scenario that the creature you see is right out of Boggy Creek or Hammer House, how would you react then? And do you think it would be an instantly forgettable experience, a blasé occurrence? I don't know, it wasn't for me. Our next witness used the phrase, it is burned into my mind. And that is a sentence that is often said. In the summer of 2003, the witness said, I had an experience that I will never forget. And it's burned into the front of my mind. I was with some family members and a friend. We'd gone horseback riding on a hunting lease that was not in use due to it being summertime. We were riding on the dirt roads, crossing throughout the lease. When we came to the end of a road, we turned and we started to go back because it was one way, it was a dead end. About a quarter up to a half mile back, I'd stopped to look at a dead coral snake I hadn't noticed on the way in. I was facing towards it. And for some reason, I looked up towards the dead end. And from out of nowhere, a very large animal, creature, cleared the width of the road from left to right with about 15 feet from one edge of the brush line to the other. It was completely covered in hair and that hair was reddish brown in colour. I turned to the other riders and asked if they'd seen it too. They weren't turning around like I was. They were riding in the opposite direction. And I told them, I've just seen a Bigfoot. But they tried to explain it away as a cow or a deer. I've never seen a cow clear that much distance, even at a dead run. I know a, cat, a deer can, but this animal, this creature was upright and I could clearly see the motion of its arms and it made a running jump. I would certainly say that our first witness, Emma, is not alone anymore. She's joined the exclusive Noah's Club. Once you're confronted by an impossible creature, there is no going back. Life is never the same again. You're the person you were before the event and you're the person you were after. Once seen, 
it is never forgotten. I've spent over 40 years mulling over what confronted me. I hope it's not that long for Emma. I want her to find her answers much earlier than that. I wanted to look at my reports as well and see if I had any that mentioned yellow eyes, and there are lots of them. I wasn't disappointed. Our first report takes place on the Lonely Dartmoor, and it's a strange one from the UK because it is quite aggressive, and I warn you that before I read it. Dartmoor is home to the beast, and for centuries farmers have reported strange kills and animal mutilations that they cannot explain. The witness in our next case had a terrifying encounter with a beast beyond recognition, and I warn you again, this is quite, quite aggressive. So, I live in a small town in Devon, just south of Dartmoor, and there have been many sightings of what appear to be werewolves in the fields near here and up on the moors themselves. The most well-known sighting that I can think of, he said, took place in 1996, and it was experienced by a lady named Emily Watton. She was walking her two dogs, a collie and a Labrador Springer Spaniel Cross. She was on the moors early October of '96. When the dogs started going crazy, they both, at the same instant, turned around and started trying to run in the opposite direction that Emily was headed. Emily kept hold of the leads whilst trying to turn the dogs around. She saw a huge creature. It was about seven to eight feet tall, and it was running towards her. It was wolf-like, but the forelegs were much longer, and the chest was much deeper than any wolf. It was covered in a fine black, grey and brown hair and the eyes were said to be brilliantly yellow. The snout was longer than either of her dogs and she could see fangs when the creature opened its mouth. She started to run, but the creature was, in her estimation, at least four times as fast as she was. When the creature got about 20 feet from her, the dog suddenly turned and started barking at it. Emily kept running, but as she looked over her shoulder, she saw the creature stand up on its hind legs. It then grabbed the two dogs. It threw the collar against a rock, and it did terrible things to the Labrador. When Emily got back to town and told her husband what had happened, she was taken to hospital. She was suffering from shock. No more was ever reported on Emily's experience. I have no understanding how horrifying those events must have been for Emily and my heart goes out to her. Your pets become your family and to see them taken like that would have a very lasting effect. I doubt Emily will cherish the moors any longer and we can't blame her for that. Now we head back close to Emma's lake house to another report of a yellow-eyed creature in the town of Round Rock. The witness said, I know there will be many who will not believe what I am about to relate as I'm still having trouble coming to terms with it all myself. This happened off Highway 79 in Egger Avenue, Williamson County, Texas, close to Round Rock. It was the 23rd of June, 2017. I can't shake the image of seeing or the sounds that I've heard and the only way for me to make sense of it all and to deal with any of it is to write it down while it's still fresh in my memory. I'll just come out and say it. On Friday, June the 23rd, 2017, I saw a very large and tall thing in our backyard, and I think it was Bigfoot. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. And I consider myself to be one who quickly debunks extraordinary claims by others, whether it be UFO activity, the Loch Ness monster shenanigans, and even Bigfoot sightings. Our youngest son used to watch those Bigfoot shows, and my wife and I would offhandedly snicker at one another at his belief in something, so obviously fake. But then this happened. It started off as a regular Friday evening. I was looking out the window. I thought I saw someone running down by our creek area, which is odd because the individual would have to be very tall, much taller than what would be considered a normal-sized person 
for me to be able to see him from where I'd been standing. I stopped the record player and I curiously walked over to the doors and I looked out the west side of our home. Everything appeared quiet and normal. I didn't notice anything. So I thought nothing more about it. And I went back to my music writing. And this is when things suddenly became strange. I heard an unusual howling type noise. At first, I thought it may have been something wrong with my speakers. But the bizarre sound continued when I turned the music off. It almost sounded like a hoot, though much deeper and varied. Our three dogs began nervously congregating by the door and they all seemed extremely agitated as they paced back and forth. They even began doing their own unusual howling, something I have never witnessed any of them do before or since. I thought there must have been another dog or a possible, say, a coyote recently in the neighbourhood maybe and that's what had set them off. So in order to ensure the safety of the dogs, I grabbed a broom. Not the best choice of weapon, but I opened the door to investigate. And this is where things happened rapidly. It's all pretty much a big blur at this point. As I shut the door, our littlest dog squeezed through the narrow opening and bolted towards the back fence that overlooks the creek area. She was running at breakneck speed. And that was until I looked up. And I noticed this large creature in our creek and it's glancing in our direction by the swing. It had glowing yellowish eyes and it quickly turned away from me and ran to the south, following the flow of the creek until it disappeared. I was stunned. Where I was expecting a little nuisance, say I'd found a marginally imposing creature, it was surreal to watch such a large creature move so quickly as it bounded towards the highway and it retreated underneath that overpass and beyond. I only caught a brief glimpse of this thing. It was tall, it was hairy and it had large feet and it was extraordinarily fast for its size. All that remained was the memory of those few fleeting seconds. My wife had heard our dogs making their odd noises and she opened the door only to find me standing along the edge of our fence holding our littlest dog and staring at nothing. I didn't know how to respond when she asked me what it was that I was looking at. I wasn't sure myself. The last thing we both heard was that strange sound, an ear-piercing kind of howling hoot. We just looked at one another. Well, our dogs responded in kind with their own version of that sound. My wife had asked me what made the noise and I didn't know what to say. It was a rough night. I'd read the claims by folks around Round Rock Parks and Recreation and I'd seen that there had been subsequent sightings. It all seemed so silly, even childish. And yet overnight, my opinion changed in a huge way. It was a big deal for me to share what I experienced in our creek area last night. I have a feeling there will be unbelievers. I used to be one myself. I'm okay with that, as I know what I heard and I know what I saw. And my dog saw it too. And the weirdest thing of all was how happy our dog seemed once they were all outside, as if they were glad to be around a long-lost friend, as if they recognised him. They were smelling vigorously and wagging their tails, and as they looked towards where the swing was still moving. The best thing is, we feel confident we'll know if he's ever visited again, as our dogs will most likely make those strange sounds, perhaps as an announcement, letting us know of their returning friend. At least I hope so. My curiosity was peak, was the fact that it was near the swing, just like Emma's creature from when she was five. It watched her as she swung away. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode and I will, of course, be back with you the same day and time next week. Have a wonderful weekend. And why don't you check out my other videos or podcasts or pop across to Patreon or Facebook for lots of articles and new reports. 
The links are in the description below. Until then, good night, everyone.